Here's my uh, pistons here. It's a uh, KB. I guess that stands for Keith Black. Uh, it's a 60 thousandths over. That's what my block was bored out already, and so that's what I went with. And the, the cylinders are in pretty good shape. I just had to do a slight hone on it. Uh, these are a... It's a 355. It has a... I think it's a 10cc dish in the top. And it should give me, uh, with my stroke, it should give me a 9.5 to 1 compression. Uh, so that should be good on pump gas. So I'm putting in my one side of the spiral locks. You can see I started it here, but the, the spiral locks for the pins. Uh, so you can see, um, of course they are, they're bigger than the hole because they have to fit in that little, uh, in that little groove in there. Uh, the problem you have with these uh, pistons are it's hitting the, like the shoulder or the skirt right here. So it makes it difficult to put it in because when you're trying to put it in the opposite side, it gets wedged in there. And if you push too hard, it's just going to bend it. So what they recommend doing at first is taking that spiral lock and stretching it out a little bit, spring it. So it's about a half inch thick or so, and that way you can um, push it down. They say put in one lip, put in one end of it, and then just work your way around with a screwdriver. Don't try to spiral it in there because the end of this will just gouge in there and you'll just leave little teeny shavings everywhere, if you can even get it in. So on the other side, I've already started it. So there's the, there's the beginning down there. So um, To get it started, you can actually just push it down with your, with your finger. Just push it down to your feel it click in there. And then you start working your way around with the screwdriver on camera here. So just make sure that you're not gouging the uh, the piston as you go down. It's a little awkward working around my phone here. So see the opposite side over here is picked up. That way I can it's not getting wedged in there. Probably hear it click at the very end when I get that last little piece in there. There we go. And that's all there is to it. And so I'm just doing one side of all my pistons first. And I'm going to uh, lube up everything, put the rods in. I mean, not the rods, the, the pins, the wrist pins. And then I'll struggle getting the other side in before I start working on the rings. I'm sure the other side's going to be a little tougher because, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe not. Should be the same. Uh, here are the rods that uh, came with my balanced assembly. They're uh, Eagle SIR 5400FB. Don't know what that means. Uh, but the packaging, each one they were wrapped, they said uh, match set, not for individual sale. So I have numbered them. Um, I had to put them in a, just clamp them, I clamp my device. I don't have a vice, so I clamped them to my engine stand. Um, to loosen those bolts up because they were torqued down tight and those two halves uh, when they're together you you could not see the parting seam on those so i had to uh, use a little mallet and uh nudge them back and forth to get it to break apart because it's got a little sleeve in there so sleeve is on the cap i guess and they come with uh, arp um, eagle branded bolts Looks like they say uh, 8740 on there. So uh, according to my book, the 8740 uh, cap screws get torqued to 40 foot-pounds. And it also comes with some ultra torque, which is kind of nice. So um, I put one of the rods in the piston already. Uh, it's real important how you get these rods in there. I'm probably just preaching to the choir here, but 
Uh, here's how the cylinders are numbered in a small block Ford. One through four on the passenger side, five through eight on the driver's side. The number one cylinder actually is farther forward than the number five. Each one of the on the passenger side, they're farther forward. They're offset because of the connecting rods have to sit side by side. Um, they can't be perfectly uh, in line with each other. So it's important that you get this rod on the right way because it's got a chamfer on there. There's a small chamfer right there. You see the shiny part? And there's the large, large chamfer. That chamfer has to go against um, the shoulder of the crankshaft throw right there. So the small chamfer is going to go in the center. That's where the two connecting rods fit side by side. Large chamfer has to go on the outside because that's not a 90 degree angle. It's, it's got a radius to it and it will touch. So what I did is I took these pistons and I numbered them. There's so this is number eight. I'm just, I don't know why I started number eight, but so and I put an arrow on there facing to the front of the engine. So if we look on our chart, number eight, since it's behind number four, the chamfer has to be towards the rear. So all of these, the chamfer for the connecting rod has to be to the rear, and all of the ones on the passenger side, since they sit in front of the other ones, the chamfer has to go to the front. So number eight, I need my chamfer on the rear. And there you can see, see here's the, there's the small chamfer, there's the large chamfer, and that is the rear. So very, very, very important. So I, I, just, I keep checking just to make sure there that's pointing to the front. So, and it also with the valve reliefs, it's very important. So you can see uh, number eight. I've got the valve reliefs towards the center of the engine. Uh, so okay. So and I, it slid in there pretty easy. Putting that other uh, spiral lock in there wasn't that hard. So. I guess you just get better at it. The first one, first two or three are just a pain in the butt and you're like, this is just not working. I'm gonna bend it and I'll have to get new ones. But then, and I used some uh, uh, assembly lube on there. And these are floating pin, obviously. So, pin floats nice. Okay, so um, I'm really concerned about uh, putting these rods on backwards. So I, I put an arrow just gonna as I go through I'm gonna put an arrow on there and you can see number seven um, number seven it's a higher numbered piston the chamfer should be to the rear the large chamfer and there it is so front is to the right chamfer to the left um, it's got some little laser etchings on there they all have that same one whatever it is s21 and then zero one but on the opposite side they actually have a serial number etched in there. I think it's laser etched. Uh, zero, zero two two six six or five five. I don't know. It's hard to read, but um, just in case you separated these, you can get them back. But I am not leaving these apart because I don't want anything screwed up. So, <clears throat> so these pistons, um, since the uh, oil groove cuts through the, um, the wrist pin there. They come with a support rail. It's just, you put this below your oil scraper. It's a very stiff ring. It's actually kind of hard to get it on. I had to pry it without, I don't want to scrape, you know, scrape the piston putting it on. But it's got a little, a little dimple on there. You can see it right there in the center. And I guess that keeps it from rotating around. And it, you see on the side, it doesn't even stick out past the piston at all. It's just to support that oil scraper. So there you can see the dimple in the in the center right there. Uh, and the rings are actually good for um, doing magic tricks too. So uh, this is just to show you um, why you should definitely wipe down your bearings before you install them with some insolvent. Uh, hopefully you can see it on there. You can see the little, the little shiny pieces of metal on there. They're they're pretty small, but those are just sitting right on top of that bearing. And uh, if you don't get those off, then uh, it's just going to cause problems.